Hi, welcome to Mark's Motivational Podcast for this Music Sunday episode. It's going to come to you live um, next Sunday, so stay tuned for that. So today I'm delighted to be have, uh, joined by another singer-songwriter, Lee Hayes, um, who I'm delighted to have on the show. She's got a brilliant song that she sent me. She's going to be releasing shortly. So you're very, very welcome along today, Lee. Thanks very much. Um, I'm yeah. delighted to be here to talk brilliant. today. Thank you. Thanks <laughs> very much. We end up, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. So would you like to um, give a bit of background for the listeners um, of your story, like of your, your songwriting story, please, and a little bit about yourself? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I am new to the scene. Like the, um, I have no music currently out at the moment other than like Instagram or YouTube uh, covers. And I have been covering songs for a good few years now. And t- since I was about 16, I like took an ocean and, you know, when Justin Bieber and everyone were doing YouTube uh, videos, it was like the thing to do. So I've been like doing that for a while, but um, mm. I never really thought about producing music myself up to maybe when I uh, finished my degree. Um, I did a degree in languages and but cool. I just couldn't shake the music. You know, I love doing mm. it and I was always in societies and everything. So um. Yeah, I just went, I, I applied for BIM, the music college. Um, mm. That's literally down the road for me now, um, where I live now. But yeah, so I applied for there and I got in and it just Brilliant. like, Brilliant. it just clicked, you know, that kind of way. Mm. Like as much as I enjoyed doing the the degree in, in languages, it's just like it didn't click as much as, it was like when I went to BIM, I knew that's why I had to go, you know, that's where I was mm. supposed to be. So since then, like I made loads of friends and connections and it kind of just encouraged me to kind of just, um dig deep for like actually performing songs because it's quite um intimidating when you've wrote so many songs in your room and just mm. perform yourself and then yeah. to go out on stage and perform these emotional songs that mm. are very connected with it's it's a bit like intimidating as well and yeah um it's giving yourself showing people a little bit of yourself that you never really do show so mm. it took me a lot a while to do that but eventually like I kind of got used to um being able to express it, it was like another level to the song then and seeing how mm. people would react to it so um which made you want to do it more than see how people react and uh, like this yeah. stuff so yeah I'm really looking forward to releasing this uh, single finally it's like it's been yeah. waiting for like two years for some music to come out but yeah so I'm buzzing mm. about that but that's how it happened. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks a lot for sharing that with everybody. That's brilliant. Like, so your, your song you've sent me, is, it sounds really, really good as well. Um, do you yeah, want to tell, tell the name you. of that song that's again? Really... It's um, Dance With Me. Oh, yeah, it's Have me. a Dance On Me. Have yeah. a Dance On Me, yeah. Yeah, yeah I um, I wrote it, I say, I say I wrote it about a year and a half ago. Um, mm. It was like pre-pandemic, but it was still pandemic going into mm-hmm. the pandemic. And yeah. it's basically just about like, you know, when you go on a first date and you're just like, oh my gosh, like we click so well. And um, I don't know like about yourself, but I've gone on dates and like I go on and like a string of dates with different people and there's just like nothing there or mm-hmm. too different or there's, you can tell that there's going to be some type of way that they say they go off traveling and they're just not going to work and you're, they're on two different paths. Mm-hmm. And then like you get kind of to that point where you're just kind of like the dry spell or you're just like kind of sick of it dating and then all of a sudden like you just walk into the bar for your next kind of one to add to the list and it just it's so different like it's just like um takes it out of the world kind of thing and you kind of just become like obsessed and like this is this is what dating was supposed to be and you remembered it and yeah and then you just click so much and you just want to find out all about them and like their drink order or like um all their friends and how they live their lives and all the stuff mm. that they've lived before meeting you and you know that kind of way in your head kind of goes mm. off into like this kind of fake scenario thing and yeah so that's basically it like so mm. no it's a great song it's a, it's a brilliant song and oh, um when, when is that coming out when when, you, when are you releasing um, it? it's getting released on friday the 26th of november Gordon. um i had to like you know the way adele is releasing music on the 19th yeah. and like taylor swift is releasing on friday like i had to give them a chance for the charts yeah you, know? you have like, to yeah definitely take yeah, up all, yeah. the, all, the, <laughs> all the all the space yeah you know like, <laughs> exactly so, yeah, yeah exactly yeah, so that's, yeah. What no, that's great so um the <laughs> listeners will be delighted to hear they're going to hear it now um i'm going to um share it with with the with the listeners Wonderful, after this podcast yes. so so um thanks for for sharing with me and thanks, give me yeah. the privilege to share it first <laughs> so that's pretty like the first one mark yeah i know <laughs> remember yeah, yeah. when i'm famous 
yeah. that's it yeah great great stuff yeah, yeah. and um yes so like how have you produced it how, how have you like you were you were saying it was before the show very... yeah sorry go on sorry no oh no you're not sorry i was just saying you were saying before the show there how you you you, you kind of um can i say you kind of um liaise with keith a little bit on the song yes um i well i ended up being keith is um like a producer and himself but he hosts a lot of gigs and yeah. I made friends with him through another friend through like open mics and everything and he hosts yeah. some and I went to one maybe at the start of last year maybe in January and then um because of the pandemic then he offered he asked me did I want to do a live gig on Facebook and obviously yeah. like that's such a weird experience actually especially going from like playing in front of people to like actually yeah. just playing to your screen and it was like obviously we've all got used to sitting in front of our screens now and trying to get to that type of normality but um yeah it was a really interesting experience so I was playing there um for say like an hour and then I put it up on Instagram and it's kind of weird because like it's a whole like social media thing now isn't it the world has gotten yeah, so I know. used yeah. to just like mixing with different people but all internet um related so i put it up anyway and these two lads um jack and archie they're producers in london and mm. um they wrote uh, they wrote to me on on instagram and we're like we really like this song because that's the, the song that i'm releasing got a lot of attention from that it, uh, from that gig that I did Great. which I didn't yeah. really think much of you know and mm. I suppose like not everyone can go to specific gigs that you play because mm. it could be different timing or where it is or whatever um but at least on a Facebook or like say Instagram gig you can anyone can access it you know from your phone yeah. your computer which is yeah. actually a good like kind of way and that's how I ended up like more people were able to see it live as well and mm. um, because I have friends like from down the country and all and they would you know I wouldn't expect anyone to come to a gig that was on yeah. like in on a Tuesday evening when everyone had to you know that yeah. kind of way so it was kind of nice to get feedback mm. from people that I actually hadn't they hadn't seen me perform yet so it was really nice to get that and then these lads then anyway contacted me on Instagram now I didn't know because obviously um I didn't know the lads and everything so they were really nice and, and open and, and me being the skeptical Nancy over here I was like I have to FaceTime you because I don't know if you are real or not so we had a really nice yeah. FaceTime I think this was back in like May um, and we were chatting away and they were just really enthusiastic and they said this is going to be a really good song and um, we really like the way you're you're going with it and like my influences would be like um the 1975 and great Moon stuff now, yeah. Which is a, yeah yeah band and um I like the band Camino like they're like an American kind of cheesy like kind of indie pop and I I just mm. really like that vibe and then Maggie Rogers ha like she's a singer as well and she just has really good lyrics and I just feel like the two of them together kind of that kind of vibe would be what my I'd be influenced on and they just love that idea so they like we worked back and forth it was quite unique because as I said you can't go to, I couldn't go to London and they couldn't come here mm, and so yeah. we just had to Awkward. um communicate over the internet and it's kind of interesting because I never actually went into any studio I just done it myself and then gave it over and then they mm. produce and then I said to do this that and the other and give them tips and yeah it was really good so it took about like five months to go back and forth on it and um, so I've had it kind of ready since August which was good mm. Actually, yeah. yeah, that's not that. I tried to say four months. I don't know, for bit, mm. August, September. Kind of wanted it out by the end of August, but I wasn't happy with it, you know, because I was like, mm. I needed it perfect. It's my yeah. baby, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I get your point there because it it does make it easier, doesn't it? Like, um, Lee, for when you're doing online for anybody, any kind of audience from everywhere yeah. to kind of see it. So that's great. It's been a success for you. That, that's brilliant. Yeah, and it, it just shows you how powerful the world is and that kind of yeah, yeah. Like and how like say like the TikTok, you know, TikTok came up really like fast over the pandemic, mm -hmm. like and it yeah. just shows you like when you hit the right audience how like how many people can be reached from you, like mm. um or how like it's just my amazing. Like I've learned so yeah. much on TikTok, like from silly things like making your duvet to like a cleaning <laughs> trick or you yeah. know like I've yeah. seen like priests getting ready into different outfits for their different things as well their different yeah. ceremonies like yeah. I like what like you know everybody seems to use for everything yeah <laughs> yeah exactly 
tell you, it just comes up. And obviously music is such yeah. an important part Big of my point, life. Yeah. It's it's so amazing how it can reach. Like I see people there that they're like barely like 16 and they've mm. this really good song and they've had that access from the on the platforms to be able to go and spread it worldwide as such. Yeah, where that's really positive. I know yeah. when I was 16, like it was only mm. basically starting with YouTube and everything. Yeah. And yeah, it's just great to see how much it evolved and how kind of just how great like once when yeah i'll have the right track like you can go anywhere mm. you know yeah exactly no that's great and like it, that's a good question to lead on to like wh- where did the, the songwriting start for you lay yourself have you always uh, oh, written songs um, yeah i like well i'm not my family are very musical and i was always mm. into like musical theater and like um that kind of on stage like acting and even mm. choirs and that um, and yeah. from a very very young age like i'd say about like three or four and okay. um then like obviously I I loved singing um but mm. I really wanted to have like some type of music and uh, musical instrument behind me and you know the way in school you always just play like recorder or the tin whistle but like obviously that's not cool <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. um although everyone does it so mm. I was like I'll I'll go learn the guitar I'll, um mm. so my cousin um I think it was about 13 at that stage and Taylor Swift is a huge influence for me and I know Mm. she learned it at a really young age as well so I was like Mm. I'm going to be the next Taylor Swift like 13 year old like I'm from (laughs) Dublin you know I'm going to be I'm going to take the world by storm here (laughs) so my cousin um my my granddad gave me his guitar and um he got it off his one of his friends like years ago it was like a really the old guitar and then my cousin came down and he was like um he taught me how to like play a few songs and then um I did take a few lessons in school but um I didn't really like it it didn't really gel with me as much uh than I thought like I thought thing with me was at the time I just wanted to learn how to play it really well and if I wasn't good at it uh instantly um I didn't have a lot of interest in it then because mm. I had to work for it at 13 I'm like that was my notions you know like yeah, um, yeah. I like flashback <laughs> or flash forward to like 26 now and like it's literally like you literally have to do that for everything <laughs> you know um, yeah. but yeah so at about 16 then I um I kind of was like no we're gonna take this seriously now like three years later so um we, I was in transition year which had more free time than the other years so uh we I just kind of focused more on it and just started playing loads of songs and um I didn't I used to write a lot of poetry I didn't really mm. think about um and I won a few competitions but I didn't Very think good. like yeah. my poetry was like anything Do you know I was just writing it for fun and everything but I put I I entered a few competitions and they they kind of won like and I'm not like I wouldn't win a lot of competitions so I was very shocked mm. that I would play. especially yeah. over some so personal so then mm. I just kind of took I was like well maybe if I put like music in with the with the mm. like poetry lyrics and see mm. what I come up with so I started writing songs like I mean um to my as I said at the start of this like in my room and just kind of played and I didn't yeah, really show yeah. anyone um and then I went on to college to do um, languages and that kind of, I was kind of more into drama and musical theatre then because mm. um, I wasn't as songwriting wasn't a thing mm. to me in my, in my like steps, you know, like you have different yeah. like kind of priorities. And then mm. at, towards the end of the degree, I start, went to an acapella group and then in that acapella group, I made a friend and turns out then the year later, she actually got into BIM as well. And then we like, it's kind of weird how things happen like yeah um, it is isn't it yeah it's great then, yeah yeah and then I just surrounded myself with like kind of more musician focused people mm. and um yeah and then I just started it's as I said it's very nerve-wracking when you hadn't played your songs yeah. in front like I was 24 like uh, like that was a long time to be like writing songs playing them mm. to myself even to my mom or like anyone and then all of a sudden then I had to play it in front of like even like 20 people like that's a mm. lot yeah, so yeah. yeah and I just kind of started doing it and tried to push myself out of and um, the mm. comfort zone and like uh, pushing boundaries and mm. and I just went and in BIM like you can do kind of your own song and do auditions for different kind of um they have like nights like different gig nights and um I just I just went for them all like I just pushed mm. myself and I 
I just have to do this because this yeah, is what brilliant. you want to do. Yeah. And what, sure, what is BIM? I haven't heard of BIM before, Lee. Sorry. Sorry, BIM is a music college. It's like oh, um, a part of GIT. Oh, um, great. Yeah. So I, I I wanted to do when I was in like fifth year, but mm. I was too nervous and I couldn't audition, you know, because we needed it for your voice. You couldn't have a really yeah. shaky voice. Yeah. And I don't think I had enough confidence to go, but I wanted mm. to go to the, um to audition in sixth year, but I left it too late to decide. So that said, I was going to mm. do music languages because I just adored French. Um, so mm. then I ended up doing languages in dcu but doing like the drama and the music society so i always kept yeah. that close to my heart yeah. um so bim is like is very well it's very well known in terms of like like there's a few different like there's with some in the uk and there's some in germany and um, so i went to the open day in the final year and i just knew like i just knew this was the place you know um it did take me a lot longer to kind of figure that out, but I'm glad so because I don't know like how well I would have done if I hadn't have done those steps and kind of figured myself out before that because now I'm so sure of myself. Whereas at that age, no one really knows who they are, no, you know. No. Yeah, yeah, but that's it. Yeah. So. Well, thanks a lot for sharing. That's great. And where can people? Where will where will the song be? If it's going to be on uh, Spotify, yeah, it'll be on every Apple platform. Music. Yeah, Brilliant. Spotify, yeah. Apple. Amazon if people even like listen to that yeah um yeah, yeah. and I have like gotten some artwork and um, made um by a mm, girl called Carla talent she's working on the um the artwork cool. at the moment and like which is something that's really cool that again like you wouldn't have as much like back say how music has developed is like mm. the Spotify canvases so you know on your phone like you'd be looking and spotify and they're moving in the background you know they're kind of i don't know if you've ever noticed but they have yeah. like their own obviously album artwork and then they have like this little mini video that's like five seconds and it's just moving and i have one of them as well so like i'm in with the times too so I'm, good stuff I'm yeah cool. <laughs> <laughs> great stuff yeah yeah so. no yeah, yeah yeah so that's great so everybody's listening make sure you check this out um when it comes to what day when yeah. is it re- getting released again sorry Lee. it's um have a dance on me it's we're getting released um friday the 26th of november at 12 a.m in every place like so if i if it's 12 o'clock um in ireland it's getting released but then if it's 12 o'clock in australia am it'll be at that time it's just yeah. all over it which i think is a really yeah. good uh, way Brilliant, yeah. so mark that oh, on yeah. the calendar everybody mark that on exactly, the calendar exactly yeah so yeah, <laughs> yeah. glitter and everything <laughs> yeah and, and how's the party. yeah and how's the pandemic been for your musically yourself as it um, um have you found it difficult actually, to get inspiration yourself or it's kind of at, at the moment now i think it's more so i'm trying to kind of uh spike information like inspiration from different things but last year because it was so new and you just mm. kind of didn't know what to do with yourself it was yeah. kind of forced to do things that as i was saying to you before we started this yeah. that was on your list from ages ago and it's yeah. kind of forced to do them now because you didn't have anything uh to distract you so <sighs> i am um, when i was in bim there was um a man that came to the to the co- um the college it called Dave Strode and he um he was like he was came from LA and he was kind of promoting this um kind of songwriting uh course that was over in LA for the summer and it sounded amazing like um and I did want to go at the time but because it was LA and I didn't know mm. you know I know, I know yeah so, yeah um, far away especially I, I don't know how much it was as well but I don't think it was going to be cheap and um, but it was going to be worth it you know that kind of way, but I didn't know mm at that time what my priorities were but then obviously the pandemic happened and um I seen he posted on Facebook that he was so you he was looking for songwriters did they want to do a course online when the pandemic called uh quarantunes like I'm saying quarantine like I'm pretty good yeah. I was like <laughs> and I, and yeah I know it's very like cheesy like it's always like you love it <laughs> you know so um and I didn't have a lot of experience with writing songs like I, I would say like I'd be going from beginner to intermediate if it was because they split it up. So I just said, look, I, as I was pushing boundaries, I was just going to try it out and see if I get it. And um, yeah, I I ended up being on, I ended up going on that kind of we did it once a week. I got the course once Brilliant. a week Um, you met up with, like, say, loads of people from all around the world. I'd say mm. there was about, I don't know, 25 people in my group. And you just 
work off then you have like kind of briefs and you go into groups or you could be alone and then you kind of just write a song and produce it and it didn't have to be amazing but like Mm. it was quite like when you realistic in the the songwriting world because you do get that you get your kind of gig would be like this is the song I want for this particular reason I need it and this and how many and you only have two weeks to kind Mm. of do it so um yeah it was really good and then every Friday they had like a guest star Mm. so then I was like grand like a guest star that would teach you how to um I don't know like how to like you'd need a lot like maybe for the the legal aspect or like how to, to produce or whatever there was like Natasha Bedingfield was on this well, this is a yeah. free songwriting the black eyed peas came on another another one and then like yeah. your ma- the the band lucas grain that um sang seven years old uh, one seven mm. seven yeah i remember that one <laughs> yeah. It was on, yeah and they <laughs> all just yeah. every week they these mm. new celebrities would come up and i thought this was it, it was amazing like this, this was something right. i randomly yeah. found on facebook and mm. um I got involved and I threw myself into the deep end and it was mm. so rewarding. Like it was basically like, I think it was for nine or nine or 10 weeks. Mm. It was really intense and I just couldn't believe it was free. And I just had stumbled upon it. And that's how I spent like, so I've got a good few songs from that as well because Brilliant. I work with yeah. different people and the Great concept stuff. of songwriting and hearing people, mm. like you got feedback and everything, the confidence mm. of this, like listen to people talk about your song and exactly like, mm they just liking it or um giving you tips and I got to find out like I don't have um I could never figure out how to use um like so they have logic as as one of this the song um the producing kind of music I can't remember the word for it but I was never, I never had it. Maybe? yeah something yeah. like that you know like yeah. when you're just producing and yeah. um audio interfaces and is what you use to record and then that will go on top of it so I yeah I never got to um was able to kind of work it out but then some guy um said like this is a really easy one to use and it was always just kind of the knowledge of being able to use that software that was mm. stopping even producing anything and the fact yeah. that he he off he was saying to us he like offers saying this is like it's called soundtrack it's like really basic but like mm. it helped so much because then it got me on the other side of of the songwriting and the and writing a song because then I got to understand different things and Great how stuff, things yeah. happen and yeah so it was really good like I just really mm. enjoyed that course um yeah. and because it was nothing else to do, throw yourself into it like a hundred percent so, yeah that sounds great like I was just talking <laughs> yeah. forever <laughs> no, no that that sounds great like because like you got so much over like being 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 uh being taught all but that must be a brilliant experience that, that's great yeah yeah it was very yeah. random too <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And, and I love what you said earlier on about your poetry the way it kind of turned into the music songwriting that's 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 great isn't it like that the way yeah, you kind of leave well, it on was, like yeah yeah I can't believe it didn't like occur to me while I was writing the music mm-hmm or the the poetry yeah I think mm. like was it mean, like I was sending my poetry to competitions it kind of gave me like confidence in that regard at like 16 yeah. to be like okay your your words aren't too bad you know mm-hmm. so yeah. maybe like yeah. um you can put them in people might like them if if or like uh they might want to hear it, the song of it so yeah no yeah. I used to do loads of talent shows as well um mm. And like performing and everything, like so, I was always surrounded by music, um, and it just took me a bit longer to realize like that's what you really want to do because, um, mm. you know, everyone has their hobbies and everything, but like yeah. it's just something that I don't know. It's hard to find something in life that you're like you just click and you just know this is meant for you. Now it's hard, mm. and you're gonna have to work your ass off or whatever, yeah. but like yeah. it's worth it, you know. Yeah. If you're happy, like mm, exactly, that's all that yeah. matters. Big Actually, time, yeah. Like, yeah, if that's what you want. Yeah, and have you any kind of gigs lined up yourself, Lee? Have you have you any oh, gigs I'm, lined um, up yourself? Yeah, well, I I have Monday the twenty ninth, so that's on release on the Friday, and then the Monday I'm performing in Turner, um, just for one of those kind of just a release kind of. Oh, um, very good. Playing it and yeah so if one of the sets i i don't know i'm playing i think with a few other people but i'm right. not too sure of the if they gave me the names or anything but yeah i'm excited i've applied yeah. for a few gigs around like um mm. 
the UK and that. So we'll see if I if I get any. I was only they're only coming about again, you know, that kind of way. Yeah. It's oh, kind yeah. of slowly yeah. introducing it as well. Yeah. So fingers crossed, like I'll definitely yeah. be out and about it. I like I'll be on the streets, you'll have to listen to me. Like there's no other choice. Like, you know, definitely, yeah. <laughs> so, so so watch this space. Watch this space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In your face all the time. Exactly. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And I know you kind of said earlier on that you um big influence was Taylor Swift. It was anybody else growing up that you, you really, you really um the influence you in your music? Oh yeah, like Taylor Swift was definitely my number one. She still is my number one, and yeah. a lot of people don't understand my love. Do you have a favorite song? Do you have a favorite song? Oh, we And um, <laughs> one of my favorite songs would be Enchanted by okay. um by herself, obviously, but um from the Speak Now era. But yeah, her um her re recording is is getting released on Friday as well. So I'm really excited for that. Yeah, you were saying that, yeah. 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 Um I loved Kelly Clarkson um Mm. young when I was growing up. Like I loved her kind of um her vibe and like the song um The Breakaway that album was fantastic like um mm. and like ha- Carrie Underwood I seem to like people that came out of like kind of the competition like because they yeah. both were American Idol um I love yeah. Carrie Underwood like I loved country music growing up as well like the American mm. country music like my granddad um would lo- like to listen to it all the time and it was just like something we really bonded over um, right, yeah. Yeah. and yeah great like he used to collect me from school I mean we listened to the radio and we'd be bopping away and everything so yeah <laughs> so that's how I ended up getting to Taylor Swift as well because my mom I remember so well my mom was like um oh my gosh there's this I think I was 14 and she was like there's this singer I know I don't know her name or I don't know who she is like that's great just start off like I, this singer you're gonna love her but we won't know who it is in the street. Yeah. And she just goes, all I know is it's something about Romeo and Juliet. And I think you would like, you'd love her and her sound. And and then I was like, looking up like on, on Google at in 2008, like anything with Romeo and Juliet, American girl, country, like you couldn't find and I always remember like so clearly of my like this is like I was just obsessed like I heard that little right. snippet and my mom knows me so well so I was mm. obsessed so I kind of have to blame her for all the money <laughs> yeah. I've spent on it so yeah, um, yeah. Any, have yeah. you missed any gigs going to see any gigs yourself Lee um over the I, last year yeah I have loads pushed up um, I haven't been able yeah. to go to any of them. They're they're now all no. next year or the year next after. Next year, yeah, yeah. See, yeah, I'm a big fan of Harry Styles now as well. Mm. Um, and he used to come, but he actually has it open ended, so you don't mm. know when he's going to come back. Um, yeah, yeah. What do you do? You like it? What type of music are you into? I feel like I'm just talking about myself. All this. Oh no, you're quite no. <laughs> you're into, <laughs> no, just um, I, I like all kinds of music. You know, um, we we missed Guns and Roses this year. Uh, oh, lovely. For yeah, the they, last two I years. Did, <laughs> they're coming back next in, year are they moving on next year yeah you're yeah, gonna get to next, next year yeah oh, good. Yeah. yeah yeah so yeah oh, good yeah but yeah look, well i'm a dj as well so i look forward to playing your playing your song and lovely in, uh, yes if, if i'm doing it to clubs hopefully when it starts coming back, to, yeah probably. yeah i'll be yeah. there like force me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no this has been great lee thanks a lot for coming on i'm going to share your thanks. song now um thanks so, so much mark yeah, for yeah. having me but it was an, yeah. an honor it was so much fun kind yeah. yeah quick so i wish you all the best um and your future music Brilliant. thank you so much yeah, yeah. yeah. you'll be here no from- <laughs> yeah. okay so that was lee hayes everybody um thanks a million lee again and um we'll talk to you real soon take care well that was a really good podcast with lee hayes so now i'm going to share her song it's a song called have a dance on on me so enjoy this folks and thanks me and lee for coming on thank you tell me a story tell me from the start that is just a bit distracted how attractive your accent is Only G and T's, no lemons Please find slice slimes are all we need That night we met will be hard to forget When it's been playing around
caught in the day Something about the way you say My name like that Stuck in this trance Can I have this dance A screenshot of you and me Have a dance on me Won't you humor me And cure my curiosity Have a dance It's late at night, I lie in bed and like to pretend that you're 